Okay. And if I'm if I'm thinking, I am not channeling. And again, I use that channeling word, you know, like I just define it very loosely. Mm -hmm. But if I'm thinking, I'm not receiving that guidance. Very good. Yeah, and it's a very clear aspect of uh, defining what the experience is like, because we all know when we're thinking constantly, half the time when we're doing that, there's some worry and everything else associated with it. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's a good example. Well, let me just put it out here, too, before we get too far in the interview, because folks may be scratching trying to figure out where to get this book. Oh. And I want them to know um, that you can get the book on your website. Is that correct, Kathleen? Yes. Okay. It's available on my website at www.gateway to being.org and it's also available on amazon.com awesome so folks I'm gonna tell you something go to the website again it's gateway to being and that's spelled g-a-t-e-w-a-y-t-o-b-e-i-n-g dot org or you can go to amazon.com and look up the author Kathleen M. Deal D-I-E-H-L and or the title of the book, The Collective Awakening. So you can get your hands on that. It's a great book, folks. Um, but let, let's go to some more things, too, because there's so much information in here I, I want to get to because I know a lot of people will benefit for this, from this. Um, you know, when we talk about becoming aware, when we talk about and use the word, uh, an example of this, the word evolvement, there's a certain truth that has to be understood about uh, a person having to understand that about themselves and about their reality. So tell us a little bit because your book centers around honesty and truth. So share what self-honesty really means here to you in, in this description. Self-honesty to me means having total courage and willingness to look under the rug, mm. you know, to really admit if only to yourself, maybe if you don't admit it to anyone else, but to admit to yourself what's really going on inside. People often are, you know, driven by ego. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that in a, in a negative way, but just as a human nature. Yeah. And the ego is so fragile. So we create this identity about ourselves. We, we decide how we want to project our image, you know, who we want to be and how we want to come across. And anything that is incongruent with that, we can, you know, I call it the veil. The veil comes over us mm -hmm. and we are blind. We cannot see it. Now, our friends and family might see it in us very clearly, but they're not going to say anything mm -hmm. because they don't want to offend us. And also, a lot of times, we don't even want to know. Mm, good point. Good point, because that that has been a block, in my opinion, of evolving when you just really don't want to acknowledge that something needs to be right. corrected, fixed, or dealt with. Right. And so when we cover up these underlying dynamics, whether it's fear, pain, you know, all these other things that are inside because they, they don't match up to how we want to see ourselves, okay, then... This negativity will manifest itself in various aspects of our life. It can be in uh, illness or depression, mm -hmm. like it's, it's the case for me much of the time. Mm -hmm. It can manifest as some type of addiction. And I believe that addiction comes in so many disguises. Mm -hmm. It's far more than the common ones like food, alcohol, drugs, gambling, television, you know. Mm -hmm. Addiction to me is any repeating pattern that you feel powerless to change. People are addicted to their emotions, mm -hmm. addicted to their drama. Good they're, point. Good they're point. addicted to their illusions mm. of their identity. And my book addresses this. Mm. Yeah. Do, you, do you think that um, when we start looking a little bit more closely at uh, being very – clear and honest and raw with ourselves and I want to address the accountability and responsibility because I'm always you know marching that that beat of that drum accountability and responsibility because I know at the end of the day that's we're all responsible and accountable for our actions our thoughts our feelings our own souls if you will um, and so in this respect uh, we tend to kind of side 
we, we kind of go around that. We, tie, we, we sort of take a side road away from the accountability and responsibility. Um, but you've mentioned something before to me um, about people being blind to their own dynamics in their lives. Share a little bit about what that means uh, when someone is being blind to their own dynamics in their lives and they're going outside of themselves for the answers to their own dynamics in their lives. Well, I think that um, people are often frightened. They're too afraid to see the dynamics in their lives, which is why I say they are blinded to them. Mm -hmm. They have like these filters up all the way around. And so when anything is being mirrored back to them that would reflect, you know, something that maybe is not what they want to see, you know, they filter that part out and they're blind. They can't see it. They can't mm -hmm. see it. They can't hear it. And, you know, and myself included, mm -hmm. you know, but what I was told through these messages in my book was that self-love is so important and self-love is your anchor. Mm -hmm. So as you open yourself up to receive your own inner guidance, and especially if you're willing to allow that guidance to address these, you know, areas of your life where you have been blind, where you've been unwilling to see, that doesn't mean that you all of a sudden have to live up to everything that the messages say. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you're even ready to. And you can see what's happening and you can love yourself through it, even if you choose not to change it yet. And I just think that is so important. I think that's an excellent point because there are a lot of people um, on one hand, they, they want the truth. They want to correct certain uh, deficiencies in their lives. But then, like you say, there is a lot of fear. And then there is also some with fear who aren't ready to address it and deal with it. But, you know, we, we talk about truth seeking. We talk about, you know, light workers and we talk about. Uh, these individuals who are supposed to be pushing the evolution in, in terms of us being more self-aware and being more accountable and responsible. But do you think people are choosing that path because they really want to know or are they wanting someone to just kind of jump on the bandwagon with them? Because I know for being in my type of work, sometimes I've had people come to me and they just really want me to tell them what I perceive, and hopefully it's what they want to hear. Matter of fact, I've had a couple say to me a few times, you know, well, more than a couple, but a few people say to me, well, you know, I am coming to you for this insight or clarity, but don't tell me anything bad. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And that's a, that goes back again to, you know, this veil. Mm -hmm. they, they're not ready, willing, or able to see, you know, these, quote, bad things yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, you know, I guess you could say that a prerequisite for um, any individual to receive the insight, similar to what I was receiving in this book, mm -hmm. um, to receive those insights for themselves, they first need to get to a point of readiness and willingness to see those things to which they have been blind. And for me, what got me to that point of readiness was suffering. I had to suffer a lot. I had mm. to suffer again and again and again and hit new and lower bottoms. 